It's time to take a look at the cutest game in our collection, Boop. Thanks, Kurt, from Smirk and Dagger for letting us take a review copy of this one, Home from Origins. Boop is a two-player only abstract strategy game from Smirk and Laughter. It was designed by Scott Brady, who I know from his party game, Hughes and Hughes. Boop is an update and re-theme of Scott's original design, Gekatai. This new cat-themed version features artwork from Kurt Covert, the head of Smirk and Dagger Games. Boop was released in 2022, and since then it has won a number of awards, mm -hmm. including the 2023 Mensa Select winner, the 2023 American Tabletop Early Games Gamers winner, and the Origins 2023 Game of the Year. Boop's playtime is very much based on how experienced the players are, but with most games finishing in under half an hour. Now, this game is about cats jumping on a bed, which is represented by a 5x5 five five grid. When players place a kitten on the bed, they boop all adjacent kittens one space away. If a player can get three kittens in a row, they upgrade to cats. Cats can't be booped by kittens, but can boop other cats. First player to get three cats in a row wins. One of the most standout things about boop is the components, which you can check out in our boop unboxing video on YouTube. There you get to see all of the boop cuteness, which includes a quilted playing grid that you place on the upturned box to form the bed. Eight kittens and cats in two different colors and patterns, and a simple single sheet folded over rule book that does a great job of explaining how to play boop. All of these components give boop a fantastic table presence. This game would st have still worked mechanically if it was just a wooden board and some glass beads. This is exactly the type of quality of life improvement we talk about in episode 215, Quality of Life. It's not needed, but great to have. Now, it's also worth noting Smirk and Laughter considers Boop a follow-up to Shobu. So at the end of the review, I am going to spend a little bit talking about the two of those and comparing them. Before that, though, let's talk about how you play Boop, because it's not just tapping kittens on the nose and saying, Aww. Start by dumping out the box. Grab the cat and kittens of your color. Of choice, separate the kits and cats, flip the box over, and put the quilted board on top to form the bed. The player who last petted a cat starts, or you can choose to start player at random or use Schwazi or whatever. On a player's turn, they're going to add one of their I8 active playing pieces to an empty spot on the board. Now, at the start of the game, this is the eight kittens you have, none of your cats. Now, when a, place, a piece is placed, it boops all adjacent pieces from either player one space directly away. Any pieces booped off the board are returned to their player. Booping does not cause a chain reaction, and you can't boop a piece if the space it would be moved into is blocked by another piece. Whenever someone manages to get three of their kittens in a row, they remove them from the board and swap them for cats. Cats are placed just like kittens and can boop all other pieces. However, cats can't be booped by kittens. If a set of three pieces is later made using a mix of cats and kittens, all of the pieces are removed and any kittens in the mix are upgraded to cats. The first player to get three cats in a row wins the game. You can also win by having all eight of your cats on the bed at once. Finally, there's one exception to the rules. At the end of a turn, if all of your pieces are on the board, you can remove one piece. If this piece is a kitten, you get to upgrade it to a cat. Now, for younger players, the rule suggests you leave the cats in the box and just play until one of the players makes a row of three kittens. That's it. They're all, that's all there is to boop. While it sounds simple enough, you have no idea how hard it is to line up these bouncy felines until you sit down and play a full game. Now, my wife and I love two-player abstract games. We collect these kinds of games and bring them with us for date nights, out to the coffee shop, to play at a pub, or so on. Now, to me, the thing that makes the best kind of two-player abstract strategy game is that it has two qualities. It's simple to learn, but difficult to master. And that's exactly what we found in Boop. Though I have to say here, there are a number of rules here that, while not difficult by any means, you do have to remember. Like, lining yeah. up a mix of cats and kittens gives you cats, or using all of your pieces, if not a win, lets you upgrade a kitten to a cat. Those yeah. are the little sorts of rules that you can easily forget and can lead to extreme play. Now, while there are some outliers to the basic gameplay, I got to say that basic gameplay, though, is super simple. Pick a piece, poop other people's pieces away from it and try to make a line of three. Like, that's really it. The thing is that those simple mechanics lead to really interesting play. 
it is not easy to line up three pieces in a row because you don't get to make the determination until everything's been booped out of position. It takes a bit to figure out the strategies of how to even do that for the first time. It's interesting, as I've watched this played in public, and remembering which pieces you can and will boop, can and which and you can't boop, with every given placement seems to be a hurdle for some people to get over. While easy, it's not always instinctual, so I think there's yeah. a bit of a learning hump to get past. It's nothing hard to overcome, but it does need to be overcome. Now, what boop that does that really makes it stand out to me is that it takes that core quality of a good abstract game, easy to learn, difficult to master, and ties it to an instantly recognizable theme of cats jumping on a bed, which is then represented by awesome component design and quality. Smirk and laughter even went so far as to make sure the patterns on the pieces were different for each side, so there's no worry about color-based vision issues. Mm -hmm. Without the cute theme and top shelf components, Boop would still be a great game. Mm -hmm. The thing is, these extra elements elevate it to be even more. Yeah, because these cosmetic and thematic touches make the game appeal to a broader audience. People often think of chess-like abstract games with wood, stone, and marble pieces and fancy boards to be these kind of high-end intellectual games. Boop turns this tradition on end by presenting a very family-friendly and approachable game. It's just as mechanically deep as some of those classier games. They've taken a scary, thinky game and given it a cute wash. Now, with all that said, this is still a two-player abstract strategy game. That's what it is at its heart. That's what the mechanics are. That's not going to appeal to everyone. While my wife and I love this style of game, I know many gamers who prefer to play larger group games who aren't like don't like being limited to two players. Or they prefer games that tell a story or there's some kind of advancement or things build over time. You're not going to find any of that here. This is right there with chess, go, or yinch, but cute. Overall, Boop is a fantastic two-player abstract strategy game that also has a super cute and awesome theme with components that match it. I think this is a fantastic way to introduce more people to a genre of game they may have avoided in the past. If you are a fan of abstract games, you really should check out Boop. We get that the theme of cats jumping on a bed may seem a bit silly compared to two armies facing off, but the mechanics here are very solid, and winning is not nearly as easy as it first appears. Now, if you've never really given abstract strategy games a shot, maybe even thinking they're too complex or their work not fun, check out Boop. It's a great game, and the theme makes it easier to find willing opponents than other two-player abstract games. If you're looking for an engine-building euro, a thematic dice chucker, or the next innovation in deck building, and don't enjoy the one-on-one -on -one conflict and stress of abstract strategy games where there is no randomness and you have to outthink your opponent, you probably want to give Boop a pass. Now, I will say, though, if you happen to be shopping for someone who loves cats, Boop could be the perfect gift. While it would be great for someone you know who already enjoys abstract strategy games, this could also be a great gateway game for someone who's new to hobby board gaming. At the start of this review, we noted that Smirk and Laughter considers Boop to be a follow-up to Shobu. Mm -hmm. While the games are from different designers, they do have similarities and are both two-player-only abstract games. I gotta say, on paper, when I describe how to play the two games, or when you listen to reviews of both the games, they do sound quite similar. But I gotta say, once you actually sit down and play them, they both give a very different feel. You're in a different brain space playing each of the two games. Like, Boop is all about trying to figure out two moves ahead, that when I place this, this is gonna move here. It requires a lot more spatial thinking. It's all about lining things up, trying to make ropes. Whereas Shobu is much more confrontational. It's much more take that in your face, more like chess, because it's all about pushing your opponent's pieces as well as protecting yours. So the two actually give a very different feel. While I would say both games would be chess-like abstracts, they are both do the simple to learn, easy to dif or difficult to master thing, but they're, they're both to me very different games. If anything, I found Shobu to be the easier of the two, not to win, but to yeah. grasp the singular player pieces without the upgrade path of boot make for an even more easy to grasp game. Yeah, I agree with that. 
Now, my wife and I have actually found over time, and I know this is a boop review, but we actually prefer Shobu just by a bit. For the two of us playing together, Deanna and I across from each other on a table, we'd have more fun playing Shobu. We find it a little more competitive. It's a little more thinky. It's it's one of those games where you're going to, you know, uh, we just played the other day and Deanna appreciated that I needed to go to the washroom to give her some more time to think, right? The thing is, if it's not just me and her, I am going to grab Boop because it's more approachable and because of its table presence. This is the kind of game I love playing in public because it gets people asking questions like, what are you playing? Is that a game about cats? Is that a bed? I've literally had people say things to me. This is the kind of game that gets strangers playing games at public play events. And it's the type of thing where I'll be at Kava and I'll be like, do you want to sit down and learn how to play boop? Like it's just, it's got that table presence. It's interesting though, as I wonder which would actually get more replay. I suspect that it's easier to get people to play boop, but it would be easier to get people to keep playing show boop. Um, so far, based on the two public play events I've had where I've had boop out and, um, and show boop out, I, and boop was the one that got played more. More people were picking it up, looking at it and interested in it, but just shows how much that theme matters. But it was usually one game. People would play a game of boop and then they were done with it. There was one couple that did two or three games. Shobu, though, seemed to be the same. People would learn it. They wanted to play twice, though. Shobu was always twice because it takes a minute to grok it. Everyone would play the first game and be like, oh, OK, now I get it and want to play that second game. So I don't know. Um, for me, I like having both. But I am also someone who plays two player abstract strategy games with my mm -hmm. wife and hosts public play events. So they each fill a niche. Both of these games are going to get plenty of play, even if it's not always me playing those games. Well, thank you for joining us for this review of Boop from Smirk and Laughter Games. Something you don't see very often, a thematic abstract game with some really fantastic components. A game we hope will get more people to at least try out the abstract strategy game genre. Now, for a bit of a deeper dive into Boop, check out my written review over on the blog. It's live right now. If you have thoughts on this game or abstract strategy games in general, come share them on the Tabletop Bellhop Discord. You can find at discord.tabletopbellhop.com. Would love to keep talking about Boop or abstract strategy games there.